A blessed good morning to each and everyone as you join with us here at Faith Congregation. Whether you are with us on our Facebook pages or our YouTube channel, we say a warm welcome to you. This is the second Sunday in Easter. It is also Harvest Sunday here at the Faith Congregation. Stand with us as we receive our call to worship for this morning's act of worship. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures for all the generations. We sing together our opening hymn, hymn number 628, Lord, behold our glad rejoicing. Let's sing to the glory of God. Oh, 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 
we get into a time side of things. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we now pause to give thanks for all our personal blessings. We remember him how you provided for us when we were in dire need. And now you protected us from danger and guided us through this difficult and trying period of our lives. We thank you for our families and our friends and for the love we all share together. We express again our thanks for your protection to this earth when in peril of drought and flood, earthquake and hurricane. We ask forgiveness for the Lord because we have failed so often to offer thanks and praise for all these blessings. Because we have taken so much for granted, now may we never cease to recognize you as the source of all our blessings as our providence, and may we render true praises through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear these our prayers of thanks, O Lord, and inspire us to show forth your blessings in all we think, say, and do. Amen. Amen. So we have our scripture reading now that comes from the psalm, Psalm 118, verses 1 to 9. It'll be read for us by Brother Bernard Arthur. The reading is given from Psalms 118, verses 1 to 9, a song of victory. All give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress, I call on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me in the broad place. If the Lord on my side, I do not fear. What can mortals do to me? The Lord is on my side to help me. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take the refuge in the Lord. I will put confidence in mortals. It is better to get ready to think of it. I will put his confidence in princes. The word of God. Thanks be to God. And so we say a warm welcome to all joining in worship with us this morning. Whether you are online or here in the sanctuary with us as we celebrate another Harvest Sunday. God has been good to us. And he continues to be good to us. In spite of all the challenges and difficulties, we know that we can trust in our risen Lord for all that he has done and continues to do. And so we just ask that you celebrate with us here at Faith this morning as we celebrate another Harvest Festival. And so before we go any further, however, there is one birthday that we are celebrating this week. That is listed here and maybe there's someone or ones of you who are watching with us online and so we say happy birthday to you also but our brother kevin yard from the bethlehem congregation he'll be celebrating another milestone on april the 16th april the 16th and so we say happy birthday to you brother kevin as you celebrate another year and may god continue to bless you And so we continue with this act of worship as we continue to celebrate all God's goodness towards us. And so we begin with a word of welcome as we hear from Andrea and she'll be followed by Joshua. God bless you. So first we hear welcome from Andrea. Welcome. Our harvest festival is here. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you this year. The theme is Listen to the master's tongue. This message is to one and all. You can sit back, relax, and share. I hope you enjoy everything here. Once again, I extend a warm and hearty welcome to each of you. God bless you. I am just a little boy. I don't have much to say. But God bless you on this harvest day. Yeah. 
And so we thank Andrew and young Joshua for sharing with us and welcoming us. And so God has given you the pleasure to be here. And so we give thanks to God for all that he has done and continues to do. And as Joshua reminds us, God bless you. We now have a solo from Sister Lana. As she sings for us, we gather together.
continue to give thanks to God for all his goodness towards us. And as we wait upon God and receive his blessings, oftentimes we are encouraged to pray to him, to call out to him. And so we hear again from Andrew, help me Lord, and she'll be followed by Kimara, I can hear the voice of Jesus. Help me Lord, help me learn to listen to you. Show me what I must do. Let me be a shining light, shining, shining, oh so bright. Please listen to my little prayer, which is here when the day is fair. Thank you Lord for Harvest Day, when we have so much to say. voice of Jesus calling. Come my dear friend, why are you stalling? I could give you spiritual health and I could give you spiritual wealth. I'm coming my dear Savior. Thank you for your grace and your favor. Thank you for remembering me. All my gifts I bring to you. Thank you. Along the theme of listening, Andrea reminds us, help me Lord to listen to you. Show me what I must do. And I pray that this is our desire this morning as we come together to share in this act of celebration that we seek to hear from God and to do as he has called us to do. And we hear now a special duet. This comes from Brother Cameron Bright, but also accompanying him is our senior pastor, the Reverend Rosalind Hammond as they sing together the love of God.
you, Reverend Rosling and Brother Cameron, for that lovely rendition which tells us of God's love for us. We turn again to our youth, this time young Ramon and Kai, we follow him. Ramon will share with us, I want to be like Samuel. And Kai will tell us, will tell us about the clock. I want to be like Samuel. Lord, give me ears like Samuel, and a heart it is to love you as well. Give me the heart to listen to your wise command, and to be a valuable citizen of this land. Help me to know the difference between right and wrong, for in you true wisdom is found. Help me to be an ambassador for you, wherever I go and whatever I do. Tick tock, tick tock, says the clock on the wall. Listen, my friend, to its wake up call. Christ is calling you today. Listen to what he has to say. Get serious, all adults, boys and girls. Seek Jesus to wipe away our fears. Your master is coming very soon. It might be midnight, day or noon. As time keeps fleeting away, pay attention to his call and obey. Pray daily, seek his wise advice. All your needs, he will suffice. We thank you two gentlemen for sharing with us. And as Ramon reminds us, we should have ears like Samuel. And so you're seeing a theme throughout this morning's act of worship, the theme of listening, listening to God's voice, hearing what he has to say to us and seeking to obey his will for our lives. We pause now to hear again from our choir. This time we go to a rendition that they gave through the dedication service of this very congregation just a couple of years ago. God of our fathers. So sit back, relax, and hear from the choir as they sing that piece, God of our fathers.
thank you, Claire. Those were the days before COVID when we could gather in large numbers. But fear not. This too will pass. And so we continue to trust God to be with us as we listen to his voice speaking to us and encouraging us to continue on our journey. We will now have a dramatic presentation. What does God have to do with it? What does God have to do with it? We do have quite a bit of acting talent here at Faith, and so we will have this on display for you now as we witness this dramatic presentation. What does God have to do with it? Please help me for it. If it's you should call it rather than call it. You know what it can be. You're right, Joe. Do you have a rather have a stranger on this? I'll find you something. What is the poster about them? Let me have a look. Praise and thanks to God. Yes. That is our thing in the church. We are looking for lights to see how many things we have to do by the Sometimes we take too much for granted. We don't recognize the Lord is helping us, and we don't say that to Him. We both get to remind us to say thank you. I don't know why you Christians make such a possible call. Is He just doing what He's supposed to do and take care of you? Whether or not it feels out to take care of us, we should be appreciative of what it does. I just think you are all making too much fuss of this and you then. No, we're not. We should let, let someone do something for you or give you something for you to say thanks. Sometimes, I guess. Anyway, if I'm ready to go through and carry the poster, I'll go with you. Thank you, Jenny. You see, I'm appreciative of you walking out the road with me. That's what we should be with God. Ah, uh, too much fuss. I feel that's why you do need to go with you. So that's the end of that. Come on, let's go. Someone has said, a gentle path to the end of greatness. This is an expression of humility. I think that's the crux of the matter. My question is, what does God have to do with it? Let's go. <laughs> Thank you. 
struggle through our times. Furthermore, God seemed to be always on his side. Then he managed to kill the giant of a couple of hells. And then he killed the lion and the bear with his bare hands. He could afford a time to praise God. How was it he the one who escaped somebody challenging? Yes, he had a reason to thank God. But what? As I thought, what has God done for you? Did you escape the fall? Did you break your foot or did you break your foot? I will say you should start serving another God. If this one can protect you from sin or fall, no, don't be like that. No, you wouldn't know. But this after is blessed in his terms. If my foot would have over the mission, I would have gone on that one straight to the beach. Their presence were affected by a fog in a nation. They were afraid that the fog did it. But then, at that time, I would have ended up in some sort of way. These questions also saved me from the environmental hazard at my workplace last week. That surely would have saved me in Australia. Then, there was yesterday at the beach with that six well, which had the tumors and surgeons in trouble. You know I love to see and I am there every Saturday, but I can't swim and I can't manage the abyss, so I know they would have been still searching for my for the body now, if that thought had prevented me from going to sleep. Wow, all of those things will happen to you. I know broken foot behind it there. But if God is protecting you from all these hard things, could he find an easier way than breaking your foot? So for example, that hard little show, it actually is a broken thing, just a hard spring. I do all of these questions and that to work in two days. And I get God back for that. I didn't even get any cuts or bruises when I fell. I guess you do have something to be thankful for. Well, what do we have to be thankful for? Is this the world of life? It has come and caused so much pain and death. It has put so many people out of work. It has even stopped you Christians from gathering and worship. Tell me now, why would you be thankful for? I don't think that it's difficult to see for the first God is just to get my life on our heart. But even in this time, God is protecting us. He has not allowed us to starve, even though many people have been here off. So many persons have come to the aid of others in this time. Look at how some people came across on board to give tablets to children so that they could attend school online. Or how the students were collaborating from their homes to provide entertainment for us. Technology has advanced and we have tried to get our knowledge of it. Before last year, I would not have believed that I would be able to do so much with technology. But today I am living with my grandchildren to see everything. Can you imagine that? I can see and talk with them whenever I want to. You and I would never have thought about that possibility before today. Now, even though we can't worship in church building, we can have worship online and share the word of God even further than when we are in the building. Well, I never really thought of it like that. I must say that it was it was a pleasure to hear the sounds of nature in the night instead of the noise of flowers and silence all the night long. I guess I can find it for that. Well, we have to get to know. Joe? Joe is just what I was talking about. Really. God does a lot of good things for us, but sometimes we don't even remember to thank him. Sometimes we just accept our food. I know she's talking about me. Okay, Elsie, I will begin to say my prayers before you. Perhaps you can get another poster to other people's to remind you to say, I am Mr. Lord. That's so close to God, how they won't like when you're up here. And maybe I should attend the harvest to learn more about why we need to give God. I'm glad to get I'm glad to get it at you. I'll make you a poster when I get back to you. And I will see you at the harvest show. Take care of your thing. In the meantime, give thanks and we'll pray for that. Bye, 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 Bye,
thank Jeff, Esther, and Willis for sharing with us in that very entertaining and inspirational piece of dramatic presentation. And we pray that God will continue to flourish and to use them. And maybe one day you may see them in Hollywood. Who knows? I just want to let you know that all of these pieces and poems that you have been hearing this morning were written by one of our own, so they're all original pieces. This was a copy from some book somewhere, my sister Maria Barker took the time to write all of these out and to put them together. And so, as I mentioned earlier, we saw the theme, and so she has brought that theme of listening to God all through these pieces that we have been hearing this morning. We will hear now from our very own Moremus Singers. This is our own within the conference, Moremus Conference. And the Moremus Singers is well known, not just locally, but, <clears throat> but regionally. And so we hear from them now as they sing for us, as was done on the 250th anniversary service. When in our music, God is glorified. When in our music, God is glorified. The Marema Singers of Barnabas. We also give of our tithes, our offerings, and even as we come on this harvest day, as we 
bring some of the produce that God would have given us. And so, for those of you who would have brought your harvest offering, remember you can place it in the, the container as you come in or leave the sanctuary. But at this time, let's pause for a word of prayer as we lift up to God all that He has given to us and ask Him to bless those things that we have given back to Him for the furtherance of His work here on earth. Let us pray. Our loving God and Heavenly Father, we do indeed thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done and all that you have continued to do for us. We thank you, God, Lord God, for the gifts of life, for the gifts of food, of money, of friends, of shelter. And so, Lord, even as we come at this time, we come giving back to you just a fraction, Lord, of what you have already blessed us with. And we pray, Lord, that as you would receive these gifts of money, Lord, that you would bless them and you would multiply them and continue to use both it and us together for the furtherance of your work here on earth. So bless us now, Lord God. Receive these, our blessings, and continue, Lord, to go before us as we, Lord, surrender to you to be used by you. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. We hear now a few notices and concerns as they apply to us. For us here at Faith, we will have our Holy Communion next Sunday at 8 a.m. So April the 18th, normally it would have been today, but because of Harvest Sunday, we will have our Holy Communion on the 18th, which is next Sunday. We're reminding all youth, we would have started yesterday with our Touch and Go series, and that is an online series of youth activities, including stories, games, and different activities for different age groups, and it's under the theme, Shift the Focus, which is our provincial team. Like I said, we would have started last evening by a Zoom at 4 p.m., and we continue next Saturday, also at 4 p.m., and the following Saturday at 24th, all on the Zoom platform. So if you haven't yet received your credentials, um, you can listen up for them or contact one of us so that they can be made available to you, especially the youth. I think uh, next Saturday would be the preteens. Preteens would be next, next Saturday, and then the teenagers would be the following Saturday. And on the following Sunday, on April the 25th, at 10 a.m., will be youth convention. It will be all virtual this year. And so, as a result, we wouldn't be having in-person worship within our various sanctuaries, but we will join online on the conferences, YouTube and Facebook um, pages and channels as we support and worship God with our youth as they seek to lead us in worship knowing that they're the next generation, they're the ones who will be leading the church in the upcoming years. And so we lift up our youth before you and we continue to support them. I want to remind us here within the pastorate that our senior pastor, the Reverend Rosling, will be proceeding on to furlough from April the 15th through to August the 15th, 2021. Uh, it is a much needed furlough, it was one that was deferred for a couple of years now, and so she has earned it. And so we would pray that as she goes off on furlough, she would be refreshed and reinvigorated. That as she comes to us again on August the 16th, that we will be blessed by her being refreshed. And for you at the Bethlehem Congregation, uh, well for all listening too, because you can participate, our pantry needs replenishing and it has been work, worked very hard over these last few months as we support those in need. And so your dry goods, uh, we also accept fresh produce, uh, but you will just need to let us know in advance so that we can plan for them since the shelf life of fresh produce tends to be limited. Oh, and before we continue, I just want to remind us that our conference will be at prayer and on April the 24th, which is a Saturday at 6 a.m. It will be online. So you don't have to leave home. You just get up on the appropriate time and you join in prayer with the conference as we lift up 
or concerns before God. And so we continue now with our act of worship and we sing together hymn number 638, 638, God of the earth and sky. Following the singing of this hymn, we will hear the message that God has laid upon the heart of our senior pastor, the Reverend Roslyn Hammond. I believe that this would probably be the last sermon you hear before she goes off on show. Yes? Faith. Faith, yes. So this will be the last one at faith that you would hear from her before she goes off on furlough. And so we listen to the message that God leaves with us as she proceeds on furlough. The Reverend Rosalind Hamlin. Let us pray. Father, we come before you now seeking to hear from you, recognizing that we are called to listen and as we hear we need to respond so speak to us and now using me as your instrument as we hear may we be ready to respond to do as you would be grant therefore that the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts together we find acceptance in thy sight, O thou our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Psalm 118, which has been read for us today, has been heralded as a song of victory. This is an interesting theme particularly given that we are just coming out of Easter, that event of victory. The psalm as it unfolds has several interesting aspects to it, associated with a variety of our Christian thought. It is, or has within it, the Old Testament text which the Palm Sunday crowd used for their Hosanna shout when we look at verses 25 and 26 they say save us we beseech thee O Lord O Lord we beseech thee give us success behold blessed be he who comes in the name of the Lord. And then there's the popular Christian text, which we all use so frequently. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. In verse 24. And their concept, the stone, which the builders rejected is now become the head of the corner that is identified in verse 22. So we have quite a bit of material there that we have become familiar with for various reasons. This psalm has a theme of thanksgiving and if, in fact it begins and ends the same way on this note of thanks oh give thanks to the Lord for he is good his steadfast love endures forever verse 1 and verse 29 The theme of Thanksgiving, my friends, is both a declaration and a call. The psalmist seems to say that he would himself give thanks. He declared that. By the same token, he called all others, suggesting that all should give thanks. 
So the theme of Thanksgiving. But the question can always be asked, what is the reasoning or the motivation behind a particular course of action? Hence, in this case, why is there the declaration of the and the call to give thanks? What is the motivation behind this declaration, this call to give thanks? The answer seems quite explicit in the son. His steadfast love endures forever. And steadfast love translates into he keeps doing good things for us because of his love for us. And the psalmist is saying, this is the whole reason, the whole motivation for giving God thanks. He keeps, out of his love, doing good things for us. And we hear elsewhere, some is saying, the Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. As he testifies to this fact, the psalmist, he testifies to this fact that God has done good things for him. And he gives further a personal testimony in verse 5. In verse 5, he suggests that he had called on the Lord in his distress. And the Lord had heard him and delivered him. Out of my distress I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. As we hear that testimony from the psalmist, I invite you to pause to reflect personally. I pause here for you to do some personal reflection. Have you called on the Lord for help? And did he hear and heed you? I am sure that somewhere for many the answer is yes. Have you gone to God for guidance when you didn't know what to do, which road to take, which choice to make? And did He direct you? Did He not show you the way that you should go? Have you called on Him in a time of trouble? And did he hear and deliver you? My friend, did you call on him to provide for you when things were looking brown? And did he not at that time supply what you needed? Let me show you how he works. To share with you the story of family, the Brown family. And as they got up that morning, the parents recognized there's really not much in the house for food today. What are we going to do about the children? How will we feed them? But they knew that they could call on their God. And so Mrs. Brown set the table and put what was there, a few biscuits, and some bush tea, which did not even have sugar. And 
that was what was set for the table and the children were called and sat to breakfast and kept looking and one tasted the tea which did not look like you know the, the Milo and Ovaltine and cocoa they were accustomed to something wrong what's this it's not water mm. Don't like the taste. And mommy ain't gonna have any sugar. But daddy said, let us have grace before meals. And of course you know that there will always be a smart Alec in a, in a group. So John pipes up, what meal? But we don't have any meal here. It's only a little unsweetened bush tea and a few biscuits that he said we will give God thanks for what he has provided they offered prayer that he offered grace before meals and just as he said amen there came a knock at the door he went to answer the door and there was his neighbor I'm Mr. Brown. Look, went fishing, just got back in. Here are six ducks for you and some sprouts. And yeah, before I forget, my wife sent this flour and sugar she borrowed from your wife last week. God providing. And the children say, yeah, yeah, we can get some fried fish. And at least we could put sugar in the tea now. And maybe some dates. God had provided. And just as they settled down, mommy having gone to the kitchen and quickly done some added preparation, there came another knock at the door. And another friend said, look here, this is the $10 I bought from you last month. Come in just in time to prepare for the meal later in the day. Philippians 4 verse 19 tells us, my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. God had provided for the Brown family on that occasion in a remarkable way and just when it was needed. Not before, not after, but just on time. And that's how our God is. He will show up and he will do so just on time. The psalmist then recognizing what great things God does gave his resolution. How would he operate therefore? What will he do? How would he behave? How would he respond? And interestingly, he said, in verse 6, With the Lord on my side, I do not fear. What can man do to me? His resolution was, I need have no fear. Who can harm me? And my friends, I ask a question. Haven't you gone to God for protection? and receive his help. Think about the, the times you have prayed in a, the threat of hurricane. Or in the threat of accident. You, you see something about to happen and you call on God saying, Lord, save me. Lord, help me. And uh, you receive 
his protection. You experience him reaching out and protecting you in a marvelous way. Remember Isaiah 43. That promise of protection from God who says, Fear not, I have redeemed you, I have called you by name. You are mine. I am your Savior. Verse 2 says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. God's promise of protection. No matter what you go through, he is there with you and will bring you through victoriously. And so the psalmist could go on to say, as he does in verses 8 and 9, that he will take refuge in God. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Reminds of what another psalmist said in Psalm 20. In Psalm 20, verses 6 to 8, Now I know that the Lord will help his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with mighty victory by his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will put our trust. We will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down, they collapse and fall, but we are risen and stand upright. And of course, very popular, Isaiah 54, verse 17. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. The Lord to your defense. The Lord for your protection. Truly then, Psalm 118, a song of victory. God is present to deliver us. He gives us the victory. Therefore, as verse 6 says, with the Lord on my side, I do not fear. What can man do to me? Or, as Psalm 27, verse 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? My friends, he has already provided for that victory. Therefore, we can give him a thanks. He gives us the victory, the triumph is ours. And even in these challenging times with COVID-19, with this pandemic about us, yet we can receive God's covering. He is there to cover us in the midst of this pandemic. We can claim God's victory that no matter what we might have, to go through whatever we might experience even in this pandemic, yet God is going to bring us through in triumph. He is walking with us, holding our hands, and carrying us to that place of triumph. As we have heard, this too shall pass. 
and the victory is already secured for us and yes my friends we can therefore give thanks because of what God will do for us therefore give thanks to the Lord for he is good his steadfast love endures forever his victory is yours he covers you with his precious blood and under the shadow of his wings he leads you to victory so give him thanks for what he has done what he is doing and what he will continue to do in Jesus precious name Amen let us pray Lord we thank you because we know that your steadfast love endures forever it is forever surrounding us and you are doing for us great things so as we celebrate harvest harvest thanksgiving as we are reminded that we need to give you thanks even when we can't quite see and understand how you are working Yet we can say with the songwriter, yes, God is good. And he will take care of our needs. And so we praise you, Lord. We give thanks and praise to our God. Help us then to listen as you call to us and to share that good news with others so that they too might experience your victory and be able to give you thanks. We praise your name then, O oh Lord, as we claim that victory with thanksgiving. Amen. And so brothers and sisters, as we listen to God's holy word, as we hear his voice, we are reminded that God is a good God. He provides for all our needs, and so we can rely upon him. And so as we conclude this morning's act of worship, let us sing together hymn number 625, Yes, God is good in earth and sky, from ocean depths and spreading wood. 10,000 voices ever cry, God made us all, and God is good. Let us sing to the glory of God as we praise Him, because our God is good.